preach the word. Let's see if I can do this old, it's been a while since I've done it without a PowerPoint. We'll give it a shot. All right, so today, what are we celebrating? Lord's Supper. Lord's Supper. And so there's so, the, the metaphors and the symbolism and everything is so rich that uh, we're going to be spending time looking at different aspects. And so uh, I don't know if you guys can remember from the catechism. Okay, raise your hand if you can remember here. But we had a question. It was question 133. What is the Lord's Supper? Anybody remember? Yeshua? It is talking to God. It is talking to God. Now that'd be prayer. <laughs> Good try. You want to try, Braden? Um, the Lord's Supper is... It's been a while, hasn't it? All right, here we go. You remember this? At the Lord's Supper, the church eats bread and drinks wine to remember the suffering and death of Christ, okay? And so again, the main thing is this is a church thing we do, okay? And then the other thing, the next question, question 134, you might get this one, okay? Raise your hand if you know. What does the bread represent? Let Aiden go here this time. Close, very good. So the bread represents the body of Christ broken for our sins. And so I, I want us to focus on that symbolism today. Okay, now I had pictures, so I didn't have to get into this bread, Jackie, so we could have used it. But I'm sorry. So, uh, but the picture, guys, is you got a loaf of bread. See, we're used to sliced bread, right? What's that saying? Uh, best thing since sliced bread or something? Okay, so we really like sliced bread. So typically, we're used to seeing bread individual which actually fits our culture, okay? Um, and so the, the picture of the Lord's Supper of bread, and we're going to see this in a minute, is, is it's, it's one. It's one, and it's a picture of the body of Jesus. Jesus held up the bread and said, this is my body. Now again, clearly, was he saying his body, like, is in that? No. no okay, but his point is it's a picture, it's a symbol to point us to his body. And he says, this is my body, and then it's, broken for you okay see the point is is we couldn't all eat unless it's broken right i mean I, even if you took a bite that'd be kind of a gross way to do it you know i take a bite and give it to you and, okay so typically you would break it in fact if you read your bible in the book of acts it talks about the, how the church would break bread okay and they're talking about the lord's supper okay and so what i want you guys to understand though is 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 we we identify Okay, and remember the sufferings and death of what Jesus did for us, okay? Because his body, remember he took on a body, and it was broken for us, okay? When was it broken for us? On the cross, right? So the point is, did Jesus die for himself? Was his body broken because he's a sinner? No, he identified with our sin. He took our sin, and his body was broken on our behalf. And when we remember this, it's an it's a identification with that. Now, I want, because this is so rich, and, and listen to what it says in First uh, Chronic, Chronicles, Corinthians 10. It says this. It says, uh, uh, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Now, that's a whole other children's sermon, the participation, but the point is, is, is it's an identifying, it's a it's a fellowship, it's a it's a something in the body of Christ. Now, if I were to ask you then, what is the body of Christ? Before we go on in this passage, how would you answer that? It's a trick question, isn't it? Because what, what, how would you answer that? What is the body of Christ? What if I ask the adults? What is the body of Christ? What would you say? What's that? It says people. See his body. Okay, he had a physical body, didn't he? But it's also his people. Listen, and we can go to lots of places, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so it's the same book, verses 12 to 13. Listen to what it says. For just as the body is one. How many bodies do I have? One. one. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. So the point that he's making there is this. I have one body, but it's lots of members. Right? I mean, I've got ten toes. I've got two feet. I've got two legs. I've got two arms. 
I've got a heart. I've got eyes. Now, here's the thing. And this is the point he's making here is, is our members are very diverse. They're different, aren't they? Right? And they all have different uh, uh, strengths, right? Like, I could say, well, my eyes are more val valuable than my heart. But can my eyes pump blood? No. So if I replace my heart with my eyes because I like them better, what's going to happen to me? I'll die. See, the point is, the point is there's lots of diversity. There's one, there's lots of members, but there's only one body. And, and this is what he's saying. He's saying this is what it is in the church. With the body. In fact, listen to what he says. He says it explicitly in verse 27. He says, let me find it. Now you, speaking of the church, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Okay? And so what I want us to understand is when we talk about the body of Christ, then we're talking, now we're going beyond just his physical body. It's also speaking of a metaphor for his people, for the church. Now think about this. If I were to say, where is the body of Jesus right now? It's a trick question, isn't it? Why would that be a trick question? I'm telling you right up front, it's a trick question. Why is it a trick question? Because it would matter which body you're talking about, right? So Jesus took on a bot, took on flesh. He has a physical body, right? Where is his body now? In other words, we could ask the question, question 138 from the Catechism, where is Christ now? Uh, Aiden again, I got you the first. Christ is in heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father. He's, he's enthroned, he's ruling at the right hand of God. That's where his body is. But guys, here's the point. He said, before he left, he says, it's, it's to our advantage for him to leave. Isn't that crazy that he would say to the disciples, it's better for you guys for me to go away. Why? Because when he went, what did, who did he send back to hell? He sent back the Spirit, okay, to, to be indwell all of his people. All, so right now, if you said Christ's body, not his physical body, but the body of Christ, his people, where, where is that body? It's everywhere, isn't it? It's all over the world. Wherever there's a church, wherever there's believers, there's the body of Christ. That's why, think about it, Jesus said, who's going to build his church? He said, blank will build my church. I will build my church. And then the whole book of Acts is about how Jesus builds his church. How does he do it? Is he here? No, at the beginning of Acts, what does he do? He goes to heaven. And then he builds his church through his spirit, working through the apostles and prophets, building the foundation of the church. Or later on, when he kicks Saul, remember before Paul, is the apostle Paul, he was Saul, and he was persecuting. Who was he persecuting? He was persecuting the church, remember? And Jesus kicked him off his horse, blinded him, and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He doesn't say the church. See, the point is, guys, is Jesus so identifies with his people that we're his body. Now, I belabor that to say this is what Paul is talking about back in 1 Corinthians 10. Okay, because he says, listen, he says, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? And then listen to what he says. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And so the point is, is this, guys. He's saying, before you break it, he's saying there's lots of grains in there. But it's one bread. It's one bread. And so the point is this, guys. Every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, it points us to this. If we are united to Jesus, guess what that means? See, the Lord's Supper is intended to strengthen our faith in Him, strengthen our union with Him. But guys, if, if, if we're having communion with Christ, guess who else we have communion? The church with each other and that's what he's making the point there's one loaf there's one body and so the point is guys augustine he was an old church father he, he called the lord's supper one aspect of it he called it the bond of love that every time we gather together we look at to what christ has done and we it ought to make us reflect and look at how what our relationships are with each other in fact he says that uh, think about this Christ, when his body was broken, what benefit was that for Christ? 
What did he gain from that? Nothing for himself, right? He gained the people, right? But he did it for himself. He, he denied himself and sacrificially loved others. And the point is, guys, he did that as our substitute to pay the penalty for our sin. But that also is what should reflect on us to say, is that characterize my relationship with other people? Am I self-sacrificing for my brothers and sisters in Christ? Or am I focused on myself? See, at the cross, guys, what that reminds us of is this. I'm going to be preaching on this in a minute. But what that reminds us of is this. When we come to the cross, we sang about this fountain. It's another picture. That we, when you, but when we come to the cross, everybody comes the same way. You understand that? Nobody's better than others. If you have more money, if you're more powerful, if you're uh, bigger, stronger, none of those things matter. We all come on equal footing to the cross because we're all needy, poor sinners who need a Savior. Does that make sense? And if we understand that that's who we all are, then we can understand why we ought to have mutual love for one another. So let's pray and ask God to help us understand that as we uh, 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 see or partake of these, the Lord's Supper uh, this morning. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how applicable it is. Uh, we recognize we live in a world of conflict, a world of division, a world of self-centeredness. And so we thank you for the gospel where Jesus, uh, number one, died as our substitute. Uh, but he also died to show us what true love looks like. Uh, forgive us for our sins and help us to love one another as you've loved us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.